Hello and welcome to Guerrilla Physics. So we're going to talk about errors and uncertainty for A-level physics now. Let's first of all do the simplest form. Let's imagine we're measuring the length of something, this blue object, and we're going to measure uh, its length. You can see it's pretty much 5.1 centimetres. We're going to use the scale divisions to give us our uncertainty. So the uncertainty is half a scale division. We're saying that in reality that 5.1 could really be 5.1 up to 5.15 or down to 5.05. It's half a scale division out. We can use that to calculate a percentage error and we're going to use the notation here. X is the value and delta X is the uncertainty or the error. So the percentage uncertainty is the error over the measured value and times it by 100 to make a percent. Do that and you've got 0.98% which is not a bad error in anyone's book, not a bad uncertainty. There's another way to do this though. Let's imagine that that's a rectangular object and I've measured it in many different places. So I've got an average. I've taken a range of different readings and calculated an average, which is 5.0. The range of these readings is 0.3. So we can say my uncertainty is probably half of that range. It's 0.15 centimetres. So now when I calculate my percentage uncertainty, the change in x over the average of x, 0 0.15 over 5.0 times by 100 is a 3% error. So that is a larger error than before. And this bit should just tell you that you use whichever is the most sensible uh, type of uncertainty for your experiment. In this case, I'm probably going to go with this one because it's the larger of the two and I'm more confident that's more likely to be the percentage error. Let's talk now about compounding that error then. If we're going to use our measured values to make calculations, we need to actually take into account that we're making two measurements or more and compounding the errors in them, the uncertainty in them. So here's a trolley and it's going to travel at a constant speed over a distance x. I'm going to time it with a stopwatch and give you an average velocity. So I've measured x with a meter ruler, it's 1.00, I use the whole meter ruler, and I'm going to say, well, that's accurate to half a scale division, so half a centimetre. So it's plus or minus 0 0.005. The percentage error is therefore 0.5%, you can see I've calculated that there. The timing, though, I'm not going to use a half a scale division, because what I know full well, I am not half of a hundredth. Um, accurate with a stopwatch and you can test that yourself you're never going to be able to stop it anywhere near that accurately it's going to be much more like human reaction time so the way I've done it is taken a, a range of values of time calculated an average which is 2.43 and worked out the range and used half that range as my difference my error my uncertainty so the percentage error is 9.5%, which is pretty large this time, and it will be for handheld stopwatch readings at such a small level. So, I've used those two values to calculate my average velocity. V is x over t. So, 1 meter over 2.43 gives me 0 0.412 meters seconds to the minus 1. My percentage error, though, is actually the two percentage errors of my measured values added together. So 0.5% from the measured value of length and 9.5% from the measured value of time. 10% error. So when I quote this in my results table, I'm going to need to say that is really the velocity is 0.412 plus or minus 0.0412 meters seconds to the minus 1. We're saying that the true value for the velocity is somewhere in the range uh, 0.412 plus or minus 0.0412. 0412, somewhere in that range. I hope that helped you understand in your errors and uncertainties and you can calculate them now. If you like that video then please hit like or subscribe and when you're telling your friends use the social media hashtag BetStyle. Thanks a lot.